So both this topic, which is on limits of functions, uh, and also our last topic of the semester, which is on continuous functions, have kind of these two different parts to them. Um, in one part, we're going to be just thinking about functions, limits, continuity, the properties that made sense in calculus um, when, we, when you met them in calculus years ago. Um, the other aspect of it is we're going to talk a little bit about sets. Um, and the way that we get there is by asking the question, what kind of sets do the domains of my function have to be in order to make the definitions that we need to define make sense? So starting with our definition of limit uh, that we're working with today, I'm just going to jump ahead and we can take a look at the definition itself real quick. Our definition of limit of a function has this idea baked into it um, that if L is the limit of my function as x approaches a, then however close that I want to get to L, so whatever distance epsilon that I want to get f of x to be that within that distance of the limit L, I can get that close by getting as close as I need to to the point x. So the idea again here is that if the limit of this function is 4 as x approaches 2, then however close towards 4 that I want to get, however narrow I want to make this strip, I can make the entire chunk of my function, the black highlighted area, I can make that chunk fit entirely within that little purple strip. And all I have to do to make that happen is by choosing x values that are within some small radius, whatever small radius I need it to be. And so just to decorate this picture with the notation from our definition, the epsilon Actually, maybe, maybe let's start with L. Okay. L is the limit of our function. As we're approaching A, and here the role of A is being played by 2. So A is the x value we're trying to approach. X is the y value that the function will quote unquote approach as x approaches A. Epsilon is this radius of the purple strip here. Epsilon gets chosen for us arbitrarily by the universe. We don't have any control over that epsilon because this definition has to work for all epsilon greater than zero. So another way to interpret that is however close I want to get to my limit. That's what epsilon is quantifying. And then the delta in the definition is the radius of this interval of x values, delta. Now is a good time to practice drawing your lowercase deltas, lowercase Greek deltas. Uh, it's not an obvious thing to draw. You think of it like an S that's kind of closed in on itself. Uh, usually the easiest way to do it. Um, it's not, by the way, the same thing as this symbol from uh, multivariable calculus, the partial derivative symbol. They're actually different symbols. Um, I don't know where this exists in any sort of alphabet other than mathematics, but this is just a Greek letter D in lowercase. Um, delta is the radius of the interval of x values that's going to ensure that all of the y values for those x values lie within this strip. So actually, in this picture, the delta that's being chosen is a little bit too big. Because for these x values, that chunk of the graph actually spills outside of the purple strip. So in order to make this work, so universe <coughs> picks an epsilon, we shrink delta so that that chunk of the graph fits within this strip. And if epsilon gets smaller than the universe picks, then we probably have to choose a smaller value for delta. Right. So epsilon is the radius of this purple strip here. That's how close that we want to get to our limit. Epsilon. And delta is the radius of this little interval on the x-axis. That's how close we need to get to a in order to make the value of the function, the y values of our function, within epsilon of the limit. <coughs> so that's the picture. Um, but where we a good place for us to pause as mathematicians is to ask, well, how do we know if it's even going to be possible for us to get as close to, quote unquote, as close to the x values that we need to get close to, such that this definition will even be satisfiable? Right? How do we know that there are enough x values that are close enough to 2, maybe in this example? How do we know that there's enough x values close enough to 2 so that I can get arbitrarily close to 2? in order to be able to satisfy this definition, in order to, for me to be able to say that for all epsilon, sorry, for all x within delta's distance of a, so in other words, for the entire open interval from a minus delta to a plus delta, that's another way to think about what this little 
green interval here on the x-axis is. How do I know that my function is going to be, that I'm going to be able to find values of f of x that are that close, arbitrarily close to my x? So that's why we take a pause and we go back and we talk about what kinds of sets, what kind of domain does this function have to exist on uh, in order for this to necessarily be possible and decide that what we need is we need a domain in which however close I want to get to my x value, I can find a point in the domain that's that close. So the picture, and the question is, how do I know that my function it lives on a domain, takes, uh, takes x values in a domain, in which however close I want to get to my 2, so let's say I choose a delta, and then that just defines for me this interval from 2 minus delta to 2 plus delta, this little open interval. The question is, how do I know How do I know that f is even defined? For a point in here. For any point other than 2, possibly. And so that is a statement about the domain and, and, and a set theoretic property of the domain of a function. And how we put so we require that 2 in this example which is the point, the A, that we're approaching. 2 needs to be an accumulation point of the domain. And what accumulation point means is we need there to be other points in the domain that are arbitrarily close to 2. Other x values that are as close to 2 as we could ever need to make them for which f of x is actually defined. And so that leads us to the definition of accumulation point. The definition of accumulation point of a set so this has really nothing to do with function. We can talk about accumulation points without thinking about functions at all. But an accumulation point of a set is a point that within any distance that we want to sort of walk away from that point, there exist infinitely many other points <coughs> of our set. So there's several different ways that I've tried to capture in this definition of thinking about what this looks like. And intuitively, we say it's an accumulation point, again, if within any distance of x, however small we choose, we can find infinitely many other points of e. And the concrete way to put that into a definition is to say that for any c greater than 0, the intersection of the open interval x minus c to x plus c with the set e contains infinitely many points. By way of example, let's suppose that I have the set e, which, I don't know, maybe e has the real numbers 1 and 2 in it, and then it also has the open interval from 4 to 6 or something. Right? So if I diagram out what this set looks like, it's going to have a point here at 1, it's going to have a point here at 2, and then it's going to have this entire open interval from 4 to 6. So I'll draw in my endpoints on my number line. So here's 4, here's 6, here's 2, here's 1. And this green shaded set <coughs> is the set E. And just to underline the, the behavior that we have on this open interval here, 4 and 6 are not included, so I'm going to denote those by open circles. And so the question is, what is an example of an accumulation point of this set? What's an example of a point that however, however far I reach out my arms from that point, I can reach infinitely many other points of my set? Let's take a couple examples and just try and decide whether or not each one is an accumulation point. Do we think that 2, for example, is an accumulation point? If I stand right on the number 2, so here's me, and I reach out my arms by some distance c, so c here is the, the distance, the length of my arms, if you like. If I reach out by c, can I reach infinitely many other points of the set E? Yes or no? So the only place in this diagram where we can even find infinite collections of points of E is in this open interval here from 4 to 6 because we have a density theorem from earlier in the semester that tells us that in between any two real numbers, we can find another real number and hence infinitely many real numbers. Um, we know that on this open interval, there's infinitely many points, but down here, there's not. There's, there's not infinitely many points of E, right? There's just two. And if my arms are short enough, 2 can be the only element of E that I'm able to reach from where I'm standing. Right? 
So 2, we would then say, is not an accumulation point of E. I'm going to say AP, not an accumulation point of E. Because if I don't reach far enough to reach some of this part of my set, I'm not going to reach infinitely many points of E. So we might say, what's an example of a C, uh, a length of my arms, such that I'm not going to reach far enough to get some of these open interval points? Yeah. If my arms are one unit long on the number line, then I'm going to reach up to three, I'm going to reach down to one, And if I take the intersection of 1, 3 with the set E, what is that intersection going to consist of? What points of E are also points in the open interval from 1 to 3? If I just look for where the overlap of those two sets happens to be. So here's the interval from 1 to 3. It's an open interval, so let me put circles at the end. If I take the intersection of this brown open interval with the green set, what do I get? <coughs> yeah, all I get here is two. The only number, the only real number, which is both an element of E and also an element of the open interval from one to three, is the number two. And that is not an infinite set. Uh, it doesn't have infinitely many elements. Right? And so that's why we say that 2 is not an accumulation point. So if 2 is not an example of an accumulation point for this set, give me an example of a number which is. What is a number, a point? What is a real number? Let me be real careful here. What is an example of a real number such that if I stand on that real number and I reach out by any distance at all, I'm going to be able to reach infinitely many points <coughs> in E? Five is an example. So let's sketch that out. So instead of a little red stick figure, let me do a yellow stick figure this time. So here I am standing at the, the real number five. And if I reach out my arms on either side of me by any distance c, so again, c is the length of my arms here. If I reach out by any distance c, then 5 minus c to 5 plus c intersected with e <coughs> is going to contain infinitely many points <laughs> because around me here, around my position on the number line. Because, again, of the density theorem, and because of the fact that the entire open interval from 5 minus c to 5 plus c can be contained within e, totally contained within e, if c is small enough, right, um, this will contain infinitely many points. And so five is, you kind of think of accumulation points of a set as points of density, in, in a way, right? Points that cannot be separated from the rest of the set by any positive distance. That's maybe another way to say it. If I'm an accumulation point of E, that means that E is crowding me in, right? That, that I, can't, I can't be set apart from the elements of E by any positive distance, because however close we want to get to me, we can find, in fact, infinitely many points of E that are that close to me. So 5 meets that definition. However close we want to get to 5, we can find infinitely many points of E within that distance. But 2 doesn't, because 2 actually can be separated from the rest of E by this positive distance. One unit on this side, two units on this side. So 2 is kind of an island, where 5 is kind of part of a mainland. That's another way to think of it. So accumulation points are the points that we're going to care about when we think about limits of functions because those are the points that we're going to be able to approach as close as we like. And being able to approach a point as close as we like is key to being able to define what the limit of a function is. Okay. 